As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody, for whoever wants to listen. I'm your co-host, Steel Russell, joined as always by the one and only Beverly Goots. What's up, dude? We are back in Beverly Hills, and it feels like it's been a really long time. Doesn't it? I'm, uh, maybe, did, it, maybe it hasn't been long enough. When, I don't know. When did the last season wrap up? No idea. Me neither. Couldn't tell you. What is time? Time is an illusion. Baby, don't hurt me. I'm going to say January of last year. That sounds right. Yeah. That sounds right. So, Well, January of this year, but yeah. Didn't they take a long time to pick cameras back up this time? Yeah. Something happened. I don't fucking know. I don't know. But here we are. We're back in Beverly Hills, and there. I will say this, and I like this episode. I thought it was a decent start to the season. Yeah. There is something, because even about five minutes in before I knew if it was going to be good or bad. There's something comforting about Beverly Hills. There is, honestly. And as much as we don't really like Kyle right now. No. Something about, you know what it is? I think they film with better cameras, almost. Maybe. Like it's, it's in more high def. Maybe that's others. just, you know what? That's just the Hollywood glow. It's just the Hollywood glow. But Kyle working out in the first couple of minutes there, I'm like, we're back. It looks better. Yeah, it all looks better. You, know, you recognize everybody. You're happy to see everybody for now. We might not be happy towards the middle or end of the season, but right now I'm happy to see them. Well, as far as newcomers go, before we get into everything, yeah. leaps and bounds above Amory's start. Oh, yeah. When Bose came on, Bose is awesome. Yeah. She's cool as shit. And I was like, that's a newbie. That's a Beverly Hills housewife. Oh, my God. When they God, go yeah. through her credentials, she was like the C, the, the chief CMO. marketing officer yeah. of, of Uber, of Netflix, and like five other companies. She's retired. I... She might be 35. I don't know how fucking old she is, but she's done. And she's awesome. So I'm excited for Bose, and I'm excited. Her name alone is sick, and then I immediately think of the headphones, but you know what I mean? I used to have some really nice ones. Yeah. Some sure. Bose headphones. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's neither here nor there. My point is, I'm thrilled with the newbie edition so far, and overall... I thought it was a decent start. I didn't think it was amazing. I thought it lays the groundwork for a potentially interesting season with a lot of similar pitfalls that could haunt us along the way. They definitely could. Um, you know, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. We did all of our little predictions and stuff with Ryan Bailey when we recorded with him last night. So if you want to hear some of those, go ahead and listen over to Ryan's podcast. Yeah, we love we Ryan. on there last night, and it was a great time. And we talked all things Bravo. Talked all things Beverly Hills as well, and we figured out what we think is going to happen this season, and now we're in it. So now we got to start discussing. Yeah, we got to start discussing. So let's jump right in with, uh, you know, it's no secret. One of our faves, friend of the show, Sutton, starts us off this season, and I have always been a fan of Jennifer Tilly yeah. in her movies and everything, so I, I love that she's more of a part of this show. She's like an official friend of now, which is great. It's also good for Sutton that she has some support outside of the group and we've seen jennifer obviously more last season yep. but i do think that she plays more of a role this year which will be fun to watch but sutton looks great and she's talking about cool girl summer you know porter's graduating college she's going to law school the kids are coming for the summer and she wants to celebrate with a little salvador dolly party why not because who doesn't like a surrealism party it's immerse yourself in the surrealism yeah that sounds like an absolute nightmare in hollywood i'm not gonna lie to you this is that when i saw the party i was like this is what i imagine happens behind closed doors in hollywood with the masks and like yeah like the creepy shit it was a pretty pretty party down the open yeah which yeah. was better for me and also you get a compliment from erica jane at the end saying that sutton throws great parties sutton does throw a great party so yeah it, it looked like awesome a, it looked like an awesome party it's just it reminds me of like eyes wide shut is that yeah. the movie yep. yeah Numbers. yeah yeah that, it gave me that kind of vibe but hey great party great party great party i'm not saying it was that i'm saying that's what a i lot imagine of cats. yeah a lot of cats and masks and stuff and i that, that stuff freaks me out i'm not gonna lie to you but it's interesting to hear sutton start out with kyle and the fact that what we saw from her last year, she was not the best friend to Kyle. She yep. could have been more understanding. That being said, Kyle was extraordinarily aggravating last year watching her 
just kind of dance circles around what we were all seeing in the media constantly, refusing to answer questions, simple questions. I do think she did a nice job this episode when we get to it. Not the whole episode. Who, but Kyle? Yeah, just one specific instance. Not okay, the whole episode. Right. <laughs> like, the, like 98%, I was very irritated again. There was a 2% moment where I'm like, okay, I feel for you there. Yeah. The rest of it's, she's back to her old shit again, which, uh-huh. is, which is pretty frustrating. But it's interesting to hear Sutton intro with that. And for me, that's not probably, I didn't get from it what a lot of people probably did. But they're like, oh, it's it's a reconnection. I'm like, oh, this is foreshadowing. Sutton and Kyle are going to go at it this season. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that's exactly what I thought as well. <laughs> it, and it was funny. Sutton's reasoning was that she, you know, I, I I missed my friendship with Kyle. Why? Well, I just saw some things online that I thought that she might like. So I, I got upset that I couldn't send them to her. Yeah. So we just sat down. We had some lunch. It's whatever. Whatever yeah. reminds you of your friend. Like when I see like mustaches, yeah. I'm like, oh, shoot her. Yeah. You know, like anytime I see Mario or Luigi, I'm like, oh, shoot her. There you go. You're not even Italian, but you know. Not even a plumber. It's the mustache. You're not a plumber either. But you know, that it's the little things. It's the little it's things. It's the little things. But we get to Erica Jane, who uh, I don't know what to make of her financial situation. I know that she had her show in Vegas, and I know she's back on her feet a little bit, but she was looking at a box. That motherfucker was was one foot by six inches, and that thing was $6,700. Yep. I don't think you need to shop. I get... Probably not. I understand. You know, furniture has meaning, right? It, it carries over meaning. Like, that that white chair right there was from my, my house on New Street, which okay. I will always think fondly of. Sure. This room in general reminds me of it because it's a little smaller. So I get it. You want to move on from the Tom Girardi chapter of your life as things are starting to close down in the courts. I know some things are, are not. They're still in the midst of trials. But I understand that. Fine. Why are we shopping here? Let's shop like... I'm not saying you got to go to Ikea. No shade to Ikea. The couch you're sitting on right now is from Ikea. Yep. No shade to Ikea. But come on. We're going to point out every single piece of furniture. I reala- I just realized that I was doing this. Yeah. This table also from Ikea. Yep. Mm-hmm. This chair, pawn shop. But anyway... <laughs> Wait, no home goods. <laughs> yeah, you don't even know. <laughs> but no, you you do make a good point because we don't know what her financial situation is. She started off last season talking about her financial broke, situation. Broke, essentially. Broke, completely broke. Talking about how she's going to be able to move on. We know that she had a show. We know that she's, she's getting on her feet. You need to stay on your feet this time. Yes. You can't get knocked back off with so, a $6,700 box. Correct. Yeah. That's, what I, that's yeah. where my head goes. And I love, I look. And also, here's another idea, and I know that you need to talk to Dorit because you need to figure out what's going on with her and Kyle and her and PK, but Dorit's probably not the best person to invite over to start talking about, like, furnishing your apartment and things no. like that. She's going to say, get the she's, box. Yeah. She's going she's gonna to say, get six of them. What's in the box? Yeah. <laughs> you need one in every room. I love that box. That's so chic. Yeah, that's the chicest little box I've ever seen. Buy it. Yeah, I agree with that. But that's not what they're discussed. She doesn't even talk about furniture. She just shows up and does say, oh, it's all so gorgeous. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an expensive-ass store. Yep. It's like Pacific Designs. or it, it sounds fancy, but whatever. She's there to lay on Erica Jane, what we all obviously already know. But it's the PK and Dorit separating, that whole thing. I'm happy that they got it started immediately. immediately. Same. Same because there's so many questions. Anything, I have. and this is this should be a rule of thumb moving forward. If there are things that happen in the off season that we all know, and it's something like that, do not wait to get it introduced. Good point. Do it right away because we already because know. Otherwise, it's going to be like, all right, we're, what are we going to do? Like four episodes of you guys talking about doing it, and then you're going to finally do it, and we're going to get to see it. I don't want to wait that long. Yeah. Just get it out of the way now. We know that it's going to loom over for the rest of the season, and you're, it's going to impact a lot of decisions. Just do it now. Yeah. Get it out in the open because we know it's there. And then it's like the scan of all thing. We waited how many episodes for that shit to finally yeah. drop. That being said, that whole season was reality TV gold. Mm-hmm. They didn't need to change much there. But it's it, when you know it, this impending doom is coming, like you said, just let's get into it. Yep. We don't need to skate around it. But it is ironic that Erica did say, you know, threw some shade at Bravo Con, like who's next on the chopping block? She's like, PK and Dorit. And Dorit's like, and I think I see what she's doing here. She needs friends. So she's like, look, it was a shady question. She gave a shady answer. It's it's Erica. Yeah, whatever. It's just fine. Yeah. Oh, is that what you got from it? No, because I, I think that, I think Dorit said pretty much the same thing at the reunion too. 
So I think she was already kind of planting seeds in there. But hey, look, you don't want to make an enemy out of Erica Jane anyway. That's fine. That's a good point. But we get flashbacks of PK being a piece of shit. And we watched that all last season where the therapy was a he's eating pizza and drinking beer, yep. saying that she's obnoxious for her PTSD, a lot of stuff. And yeah, look, Dorita is obnoxious. But to say her PTSD is obnoxious as her husband mm -hmm. is obnoxious. Yep. So he had a terrible showing last year, and she starts to dive into his, his issues with alcohol. Also didn't care for how she went about this throughout the rest of the episode, but right. whatever. She brings up the fact that he was using alcohol to cope with all the issues that they were having. They were screaming at one another. He decided to dry up for a week, and that turned into this journey with sobriety, which is great. Good for PK. No jokes there, seriously. But she goes like, what happened? And initially, and Dev and I talked about it, because she watched this with me and, and for her to open up instantly and say like, yeah, there was alcohol involved. Like this, it seemed like we were getting a real moment from Dorit where it's like, this is what's going on. She's being genuine and authentic. And then we get this super PR answer of, look, this was two grown adults, two grown ups that we decided to sit down and say, what's best for us. And you know what? We just decided that we needed to separate, not divorce. And we just needed to separate because that's what mature adults do. I'm like, okay, now you're back to the bullshit answers. Well, and it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense too, because you prefaced it by saying real things that actually were the detriment of your relationship. Right. That we've been seeing for years. Yes. That he downplayed all of your emotions and that he was having a hard time. So like he was going out and socializing and you were staying at home. And he was getting mad at you, and that they was going back and forth. He's those leaving are, to go to London for a month. Yeah, those were reasons why you broke up, which you then just laid out for us, and then went back to the PR answer. Yes, which like that's not you can't do that, and then say, but we sat down and had like an adult conversation about what's best for us. It led you there, so that those are the problems. It led you there, and then we find out later. Yeah, PK is the one that said, "Let's get separated." Yep. So. Don't do this already. Mm -hmm. Like, just be if you're going to have this season of like solo Dorit, and that's what we've gotten from trailers and like peeks into the future of this season, then just do it. Don't give us the PR answer because it's not going to play well, it's going to get irritating, but whatever. She asks about what's going on with uh, or with Kyle. Like, do you, I'm going to see Kyle later? Like, what do you want me to do about it? And Dorit's like, don't say a fucking word. And I will say this about Erica Jane does she get messy? Yeah. But I do think that she prides herself on keeping her word. When you say it to her, like, I think don't say it. If it's that impactful, if it's that, she's big not going to let it. She's slip. not going to let it slip. Yeah, so I appreciate if it's that. something messy that she can throw out there. She will. Yeah, but with that kind of stuff, so you know, hats off to her there. But that takes us over to Kyle and Mo moved out a week ago. We've also watched this in real time. The the downfall, if you want to call it that, of their relationship. Mauricio's on the mountain doing body shots with a bunch of models and mm -hmm. Kyle's palling the world with Morgan Wade, quote unquote, palling around with Morgan Wade. We still don't really know what's going on there, but she's trying to figure out how to, like, to be independent. And I will say, again, objectively, outside of looking in, like, this is kind of sad. Her whole world has shifted. Her, her whole world has changed. Portia moved out. Or, sorry, Alexia moved out. So she's trying to figure out how to be solo in the house. It's it's quiet. It's, it's different. Then Erica arrives. And they immediately start talking about Dorit and how Kyle doesn't have time for it. They haven't seen each other since the reunion, which I thought was interesting. They haven't talked really since then. And... Kyle's still upset about the text message and the fact that Dorit read the text message out loud. We saw the text message and the timing of the text message. You guys hadn't talked. Shit was weird for a while. The night before the reunion, you dropped this quote unquote emotional text message on her that pretty much is trying to hold her hostage so that she doesn't spill any shit on you or yeah. talk any shit. That's what that was. We're not stupid. I don't know what Kyle's trying to accomplish here either. Because she is trying to manipulate the audience and other people into thinking that they are friends. But you've told us multiple times on Amazon that you guys Live. are not friends and you're not that close. Yeah, you started at the reunion by saying, how often do we ever have lunch? Name it in the last seven years. How many times? One hand. Like you were doing that to Dorit on the reunion, then going on Amazon Live and claiming even more that you guys aren't friends. But now you're saying that you guys are friends. So I don't know what she's trying to do. I can't really wrap my head around it. I, I can't either. And it, it, we we bring up the Kathy thing at the reunion again. And yeah, that was shitty if she's friends with 
with Kyle more so than Kathy because that was to me a moment where there was a line drawn in the sand yeah. and Dorit sided with Bowing Kathy. down with Kathy. Yeah. yeah, and I saw that and I get that, but but that was two seasons ago. Yes, exactly. And Dorit just she feels isolated. She feels like Kyle doesn't have her back. And I, I do think that we've seen over the years a one sided friendship, and we right. see this a lot in Bravo. But she feels like she has to walk on eggshells around Kyle. But if Kyle needs her for anything, she's supposed to be their beck and call. Mm -hmm. So that's bullshit. That's not how our friendship works. And I'm glad that Dorit's getting to the point where she wants to be like, fuck this. And we see that much more later. But it is interesting to watch Kyle spin this narrative to us, the audience. And it's like, what do you think that we think we're watching right now? And I've had this I have question. No idea. I've had this question a lot over yeah. the past year with multiple shows. Like, what do you think that we think? Because you couldn't be further from what we actually think. Well, it's one of those things that a lot of times that'll pop up based on vibes and the context. Sure. But Kyle is telling us two different things. Yes. So that's why I'm really confused. It's it's, it's one thing because you can immediately say, oh, you're just trying to convince us that it's the other way, even though all of your actions are showing one thing. Mm -hmm. With Kyle, it's you're telling us two different things mm -hmm. and then gaslighting Dorit into thinking that you are friends, but also telling everybody else that you're not friends, including the audience. So yes. now it's really confusing for everyone. Right. I don't know what the hell she's doing. I can't figure it out. Me neither. And yet, here we are. I can tell you right now, it's, it was a one-sided friendship, and you guys probably weren't that close in your mind. That's that's, that's what it probably seems like. The I feel truth. like Dorit probably thought you guys were closer. Could it have been more of a TV friendship? Yeah, yeah but to claim that you weren't tight is just a lie, mm -hmm. because we've watched, right? We've seen season after season where you guys were tight. You went on double dates. Yeah. You came over with PK all the time. Mo and PK were like this. I'm not saying their relationship, that bromance, is relative to what you and Dorit had. But to say that you weren't that close is a lie. And we know that because, again, we've been watching the show. And to use this as an example of feeling betrayed by Dorit, where you're on stage at BravoCon, about to do a shot. That also didn't make any sense. The shot spills. So now Dorit makes a joke after Andy's like, rate the sisters, rate the, the Richard sisters. And she's like, well, Kyle's definitely last. That's in response to her getting spilled on. Yeah. That was a funny. She was trying to make a funny. And Kyle's like, that's so disrespectful. It's like, again, do you think we're stupid or do you not understand jokes? Is that what it is? Do you not understand humor? Because that would make sense. That makes more sense to me. And then everything you're seeing from Dorit, you're like, oh, she's being dead serious all the time. That scene did you no favors. Yeah. They showed it. I'm like, that's what you're pissed about? Mm -hmm. That's a really bad reason to throw a friendship yeah, out no the sense. window. Then that if could honestly on the scale of what you should be pissed about for things that happen to BravoCon, Dorit should be madder at Erica for saying Dorit and PK are gonna break up next. Yes. Then you should be at Dorit for what she did about Ranking the Ranking You last? That's insane. As a joke. Yeah. It's what are we doing here? What we can all agree on, what they can agree on without agreeing on it, because they're just speaking through Erica. There's a bunch of miscommunication happening. They both think the other person has changed. And they do not know how to move forward from this, or if they even can move forward from this. And the biggest thing is, at least for Dorit, is that Kyle is a manipulator. She's manipulative and has been manipulating. I agree. Yep. We, we see her gaslight. We see her manipulate situations. We see her point one direction to try to misconstrue what's actually going on. That's the Kyle Richards way, especially for the past couple of seasons. So, yeah. That's one thing I can agree with Dorit on and probably a lot more things along the way. If I'm going to pick a side here, I'm on Dorit's side. Fully. 100%. Without question. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot of wiggle room there because of how Kyle's been acting and because of her reasoning. Dorit, I get. You felt slighted because this has been a one-sided friendship. Dorit Kyle. has been consistent in thinking that, too. She hasn't wavered. Right. Kyle, Kyle has wavered so many times. Up, down, left, right. I don't know which way to look. And your big reason is that she ranked you last. What the fuck? But... Anyway, we get to Garcelle and Oliver. Just a quick check in here because while I do think this is amazing, like Garcelle, what she's been able to do yeah. with her with her movie career, her production career, everything, especially given her age, as she points to, people say in your 40s, like show business is over. She's in her 50s and she's running productions. I think this is all awesome. Oliver, kids about to go to kindergarten, all this other shit. Great. Cool. But there's too much to talk about to get stuck on a family scene Correct. this episode. This isn't so, a family show. Right. The family show is Potomac. Ask Mia. But this we need to keep moving on. Nobody on the show is married anymore. <laughs> I know. They're all they're all broken up. Isn't that wild? The real housewives? Crazy. Nope. The real single ladies. Ladies of London. All the single ladies. 
The real girlfriends of Beverly Hills. That's what the show is now. Yeah, there we wow. go. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. What a what a world. Branding but change. That would be really funny. But we get a big Thursday, May 9th. And the separation news has broken to the world. And I think it's hysterical that it's the story post on the screen. Yep. Not only does Bravo simplify it, they took out the whole middle section. But Garcelle's reading and goes like, oh, of course it's long-winded. <laughs> Your friend just announced separation, and you just can't help it. It's like, Jesus, to read. You, you couldn't even just been keep it short and sweet. But I need this picture. This might replace the Luann photo. Mm-hmm. Is Dorit crushing a heater in the car? Dorit during that crushing a heater was awesome. So cool. It was so fucking cool. That's the cool. coolest she's ever she been. She has gone up so many notches. Like instantly this episode. It was awesome. I loved it. And if I hope it was like a fucking unfiltered, like Marlboro Red, like an American spirit. Yeah. <laughs> she's just crushing that heater in her Range Rover, frantically driving. That was her best scene ever. Yeah, that was incredible. I loved it. I loved that. We need to get that. that, That's the new picture on the wall. Just her hitting that, hitting that sig. But Kyle feels bad. I do not believe what went wrong. I think you know. I think you know way more because I think you guys were closer. I think she confided in you along the way. We saw last year the bullshit confiding where she's Mm -hmm. like, I just don't know what's going on with PK. There was definitely more conversations had. I am on Sutton's side here where this is smoke and mirrors. There's a lot here that we're not knowing, a lot here we're not finding out. We get more from PK in this following scene than we have from Dorit. That's a tough way to play this. Yeah. If you know that PK... Did not expect to see PK and Mauricio. And Mo, their and own no scene. Clue. Yeah. I literally out loud went, whoa. Yeah. We got a Mo and PK solo scene yeah. in episode one. That was crazy to me. I'm okay with it though because oh, I, love I do it. need to hear from these yeah. guys because yep. Mo's been on this weird journey of bachelor life. We mm. just saw, I'm just going to flat out say it, a very embarrassing video of him and PK in the DJ booth with Kyle being a DJ. That's one of the saddest booths I've ever seen. Yeah. That I, I posted on our story and I said there needs to be a case study about the the married men of Bravo. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And look, I, it was the last thing that I expected. I thought we were going to get different perspectives from everybody in the Housewife show. I did not think one that Mo was even going to be in this season. Mm-mm. I think he. I figured he was done. He's onto his Netflix show. He's on uh, bigger and better things. I, well, at this time, it was oh, yeah, okay. canceled. He's on to bigger and better things in his mind. I did not think that he was going to be in this. I didn't either. I was taken aback. I was surprised. But Dorit's claiming a back to her scene. This is a back and forth scene. And she's claiming that they're not in a toxic place. And he has a sober coach. And he's a full-blown alcoholic, Kathy. Stop doing that. Yep. Okay? His news to share. You have now done this twice. The first time I was okay with because you're painting the scene to Erica mm-hmm. of what happened. There was alcohol involved. He's a different person. He's sober now. Great. Stop saying this so haphazardly. Because I know what you're doing, and I'm going to save it for later when she does it a third right. time. But I know what you're trying to do, and it's not great. But it goes back to to Mo and PK, and this is why Dorit needs to be more forthcoming. She needs to get ahead of this, because from what I'm seeing out of PK and Mo, I'm not saying it's the truth, but I'm saying this is PK's truth, and he's being genuine when he's talking to Mo. And he's like, look, I got sober. And upon getting sober, I realized that there was a lot more problems here. Yeah. That the alcohol was a mask and I was just ignoring some things. And upon getting sober is when I realized we need to get separated. That's not great for Dorit. It's not great for Dorit. It makes sense to pretty much everybody watching it. Uh, downfall of this scene, there were no smashed potatoes. Really disappointing there. Yeah, every husband scene needs a smashed potato in there. Yeah, if they're going to sit down at a bar together, they need smashed potatoes. But sitting there talking about it, it did seem to me that this is this is his truth. This is how he felt, and that's super sad if that's how it is, that you were using alcohol to cope through a lot of the things that were going on and ignoring a lot of the issues in and your not, own marriage. I want you to keep going, but I don't want to say that it's, it's like Dorit's fault. No, no, it's he definitely not. He just became aware of problems oh, in this no, yeah, yeah, no. It's not like he was using alcohol to cope with Dorit as a person. Right. I think it was, there were a lot of issues and we saw the issues over the years and everybody on the show saw the issues over the years. So for him to say that, it seemed really genuine. And for Dorit to use the PR move and use like a couple different things and blame him for being an alcoholic, 
that's a problem. That's yeah. a big problem. You could lean on all of the things that we already know. Yeah. Say that he just kept going to London more and more and more, and you didn't know what was going great on. great reason. <laughs> and, like, allude to the fact that he had a big social life, and you didn't, and you weren't out with him all the time. You guys drifted and you, apart. And you, you drifted apart, and you had some questions about what he was doing while he was out. Do those things. You could do all of those things, and you're not going to do that. But you know, and I, I want to know if, like, Dorit must have known that PK was going to be on the show. Yeah, had to. Sign a waiver. Got to be in there. He's going to sit down with Mo, and they're going to go through it, and he's going to get ahead of it. Yeah, he, that's what it is. He's getting ahead of it, mm-hmm. and she's – just be more forthcoming, yep. all right? Because I don't see myself siding with PK over Dorit. I no. really don't. I'm not no. a big fan of PK. I don't think that's going to She's creating happen. more work for herself. Here. Yeah, because no. you're not just telling the truth. What mm-hmm. happened? Just tell us the truth. Yep. Don't give us the PR run-through. I, it's bullshit, and we can see right through it immediately. Right. So just tell us what's going on. And then she finally does – and this is news to us because what you said in the first scene with the PR answer is we had an adult conversation, made an mm-hmm. adult decision to separate. Now she's saying, I wouldn't choose to separate. So, okay, PK decided to do this. And then you go through the run through of, I stood by him. And I thought this was actually pretty good shade. So I stood by him through a gambling addiction, through the alleged DUI, the drinking. I'm like, ew. Yep. That's. Is it kind of fucked up? You're bringing up all this fucked mm-hmm. up stuff? Yeah, but, but... lead with that. That's it. Yeah. And again, it's playing dirty pool, but if PK is going to get on here and say, I was drinking to deal with our fucked up relationship, you can have some backup too, yeah. but lead off with that because you let off with the PR answer and, it, and now we're jaded. Again, I don't find it hard for me to get on Dorit's it's side of the It's just episode PK. one. I do think that, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, we're going to arc over to a different side Agreed. and it'll be fine. But Yeah, it's just play the game yeah. a little bit better because you're on your own this season mm-hmm. and you're going to have to play it well. Yeah. But Kyle and Kathy are FaceTiming. What should I wear? And I thought it was really funny that she goes, how about a turban? Alluding to Dorit's look at the reunion, which again shows you, and I never buy Kathy's shtick, and we've yeah. talked about it a lot. Kathy knows what she's doing. Kathy knows what she's saying. She knows how this game works on a whole different level in Hollywood. Yep. She's upper echelon. She's a different stratosphere. Sure is. So she knows what she's doing, and that's proof of it right there. She acts like she's so like, what's going on? but had the wherewithal to make a joke about last year's reunion. Yep. The first thing on the phone, I'm just saying, be careful. And Kyle brings up that she wants to message Dorit because she messaged PK, which you, you should have messaged Dorit too. That's going to come back to bite yeah. you in the ass. But it is interesting that she goes, she's going to say that I'm being manipulative and flash over to Dorit. And she's like, and if Kyle, like she's going to be manipulative about, I'm like, all right, well, you, you did call it. Because she wouldn't have. I mean, accepted. she was like, if you're not going to text Dorit about that, but you're going to text PK, it's don't take care of them. Yeah, you know right. what I mean. Yes. Wait until you see Dorit. You're filming for the season. You're going to see Dorit regardless. Make this a big grand entrance to the show. We know that you think about the show all the time. We know that's how you operate. So just wait. Do not text PK because PK brings it up to Mo, and even Mo's surprised that he brought it up. And that's even more damning to your lack of friendship with Dorit. You're close yeah. enough to PK to text him, but yep. you're not close enough with his wife, who was your friend. Yeah, bizarre. That doesn't make any sense. Now you're you're working against yourself. There's a lot of look for a lot of vets. There's a lot of missteps happening mm-hmm. early on out of the gate. I think they're frazzled. Yep. They're a little rattled. Last year was a tough season. I like it, I, oh, it's, it, it could it make for a lot a, to talk about. Could make for a really interesting season. But we get to the surrealism party again. Great party. Lovely party. Lovely party. But uh, you don't like the llama or the alpaca? The alpaca. I did. I thought that okay. was cool. Oh, I Jesus, think the party don't was scare me cool. Like that. The party okay. was cool. I just, I'm, I, it's just a me thing. Yeah, okay. Because the masks, any party okay. with masks, like a masquerade party, freaks me out. But I will say this before we jump into the party because I wrote this down because I wanted to make a note of it. Regardless of their relationship at the current moment, she wants to claim they're not friends, whatever. You should put the bullshit aside because she starts going on after she says, I don't want to send the text. She's going to think it's manipulative. And then she starts dragging Dorit. She just got separated from her husband. You just went through a similar scenario with with Mauricio. You could really offer a shoulder to cry on or at least some comfort, even if you guys aren't okay right now, but you have been in the past. I thought it spoke volumes to Kyle's character to not be able in this moment to just be like, you know what? She's going through it. I just went, I'm still yeah. going through this. I'm still going through the fallout of Mo just moved out. Let me just reach out and say, Hey, I know what this feels like. I'm here. If you need me, that's all you got to do. Yep. Put your bullshit aside for two seconds and just be a good person. There's probably other people that reached out to Dorit that haven't talked to her in years. And just said, Hey, I'm, I, I heard what's going on. If I, if you need me, I'm here. Yeah. 
you could at least do that, Kyle. I thought it was a really bad look for her that she couldn't at the very least be like, hey, thinking about you. But whatever. Let's get to the the surrealism party. Dorit's got a plate on her head, and this is why I like Jennifer Tilly. Because as soon as she walks up, she literally, is that a plate on your head? And then she calls it a satellite dish or something. Yeah. I need that energy. Yeah. The, who, the, that's the Mary Cosby And that's the energy. best thing to do to somebody on this show that the high regards fashion. themselves as a high fashion. That is exactly what you do. Yeah. Sutton comes in, looks like a condom. Yeah, you free from STDs? Condoms are rubber. This is plastic. Okay. We're playing semantics yep. now. All right, playing semantics. Is that a plate on your head? Satellite dish? Great. Okay. That's going to knock her down so many pegs, she's going to be very upset about that. Right. But not this street. This mm-hmm. street needs friends. This street needs friends. She would have gotten pissed. She kind of reins it in a little bit. I thought it was hysterical throughout the evening because she's got like a beret on to, yeah. to balance the plate. Watching her get up and enter conversations and put the plate back on her head mm-hmm. was thoroughly entertaining it for was. me. It really it was. Really, it was great. And I think... What's the uh, the guy in Mortal Kombat? Is it Kung Lao? Oh, um, well, there's. Are you talking about like the, the guy who takes the hat off and throws it? Oh, I'm thinking of um, God, lightning guy. Raiden. Raiden, thank yeah. you. I'm thinking that because it was similar. He's got the the yeah, big he's hat. Got that. No, there's a, there's a guy Cabal. Cabal. Yeah, he t- or no no Ka- no it's, it's Kung Lao. It's Kung Lao. I was right the first time. Takes his hat off and throws it, and it's really sharp on the side. I was always uh, the listeners are gonna. I was always this. Scorpion. Yeah. Get over here. Yeah, I was Sub Zero. That makes sense. Yeah. What, what was his line? He had a mask. He didn't talk. He did his finishing move. So did Scorpion. Slippery when wet. That was his line? No. Slippery when wet. <laughs> and then he burst into a million. If you didn't play Mortal Kombat, let me, you're missing out. No, uh, just take any line of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's from Batman and Robin, and that's probably what's up. Oh, was my was. God. Have you ever heard the compilation of Mr. Freeze <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> buns? Stay cool. <laughs> That whole movie is a circus. That's one of my favorite shooting yeah. movies. But anywho, let's get back to business. This is where we get to meet Bose. And immediately, I'm enamored. She walks out of the car. I'm like, who the fuck looks is great. that? Yeah. She looks fantastic. And the only thing that could one-up that is she comes in, and they're like, this is Bose. And then she goes on her spiel. She's like, I was the CMO of Netflix, Uber, you name it. I've been there. I'm retired already. I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck yes. This is what Beverly Hills needs. We do not need the wife of what's his face. What I don't even Warren. Who was it? Not Marcellus Warren. Wiley. Marcellus Wiley. I don't need that shit. No. This is what I need. No. I need a boss bitch to walk in. She's still claiming bad at it, which is insane. Anne Marie is. Yeah. She's still talking. Did I send you that? Oh God, no. Oh, Maybe no. I just blurted it out. Yeah. Why is she still involved in it? I don't know. Shut up and go away. You're done. You're cooked. See you later. You were terrible. You're one of the worst one and dones we've seen. But I don't even want to. I don't want to sully this episode nope. with her names. So let's just keep trucking. Dorit immediately sees a, a friend, mm-hmm. a potential friend, and she goes right up to her and starts buttering her up instantly. And she's like, she's pulling out all the stops and then takes a weird left turn and just divulges everything that's yeah. going on in her life. And this is when I Bose got- was good with it. That was the shocking yeah. part. But before we get to that, this is where I got pissed off now because now she's like, and my husband's a full-blown alcoholic. I'm like, stop doing that yep. because what you're now doing is saying- that to point to why you're separated Mm -hmm. you're using and if the alcohol was a problem i i'm open to hearing about it sure not in this context correct because now you're putting all the blame on him because if anybody hears that that doesn't know what's going on they're going to hear full-blown alcoholic like oh the alcohol was the problem huh and clearly there was more going on there could that have added to it absolutely and I, you're well within your right to talk about that, but the way that she's going about it, I think, is icky. Because it is it, icky, and look, I think it's still fresh. Yeah, and I think I'll she's still getting pass. through it, and I think there's a lot going on. But yeah, the three times in one episode, three times is tough. Didn't care for. I'll it. give it. I'll give you that. All right, I'll give her a pass yeah. here. She's going through it. That, that's shocking. I'm giving Dorit a pass about, about something I'm Me so too. adamant about, yeah. as as all of our listeners know. But all right, I'll, I'll. She's going through it. Let's give her a breather. To your point. What I certainly did not expect was for Bose to match that energy. Be like, well, I'm widow. I'm like, here, what? Here we go. And she starts talking and she got separated with, with her husband. Then he got cancer. So they reconciled and they figured it out. And Dorit just had, she now has a best friend. Mm-hmm. And I did not in a million Bo's years. in the confessional. Do you know what I thought was going to happen? Bose in the confessional. Like, Jesus Christ, I just met you. Trauma dump. Yeah. yeah. What the hell's the matter with you? Instead, she's like, I'm a really good reader of people yep. and i love dorit we're besties i'm like all right 
That is not where I saw this going. I knew what Dorit was trying to do. She needs to garner support this season. She Look, knows she's on an island. I, yeah, she does. But the trauma dump is not what she needed to do. But it worked. And somehow it worked. It did. So, you know what? Good for Dorit. Yeah, good. good you made good a friend. Play. Yeah, good. good play. <laughs> <laughs> Who thought the trauma dump worked? But uh, Garcelle, she arrives. Things are still awkward between Garcelle and Dorit because Garcelle pointed to, uh, you know, look, we've talked yeah. about this a lot. There's a lot of things I, I that hope are... we just move on from the whole thing. Because it's so interesting. Yep. It's about the robbery and, you know, the legitimacy of it. Uh-huh. We're not going to comment on it. No, no, we're done with it. Yeah, I'm sure you can find us commenting on it multiple sure, times yeah. in previous seasons. Not now, though. We're no, we're older. We're over it. We're mature. Yep. So we're not going to jump back into whether or not she faked the whole thing or whether it was a, a ruse. Sure. Because that's not our place. But who no. did do that is Garcelle. Yes. She alluded to it potentially not being real, which, again, when you break it down for what it was, That is a horrible thing to say, considering Dorit was held at gunpoint and her kids were in the other room. So let's leave it at that. I don't know if there's a way forward for them. I don't think think it matters. Garcelle just kind of avoids it this time. I think that's what we're going to see, the avoidance. But Mm -hmm. Kyle and Erica arrive. I thought Erica looked fantastic. I thought her outfit was pretty much on the nose for surrealism. That's what I would think. But she looks great. And uh, they sit down and they start talking. Kyle starts discussing things and we start to get into her stuff a little bit more. Mo and Alexia just moved out. So things have been really tough. Things are changing. How are you coping? This is the 2% that I'm going to give Kyle because of what she starts talking because she brings up Morgan Wade immediately and refuses to say her name. So initially I'm getting irritated. I'm like, dude, we all know who you're talking about. And at this point she's been on the show. So what are we hiding right now? You're not protecting her. You're not protecting Mm -hmm. yourself. This is really annoying. But what I did not expect was her to start getting into this whole thing. And and she goes even further and says, you know, whatever you, you hear in the tabloids and the media, like none of it's true. It's not true. Garcelle points out what we all talked about last year. Well, what about the fucking music video? Yep. Because it's pretty damning, at least to us. It seems like you guys were trying to be a little bit coy with this whole thing. And then Kyle blames all the speculation for her questioning her sexuality. Yep. Bold move. Very bold move. But I started to feel bad immediately after this when she starts talking about talking to her daughters. Yeah. Saying, I've been questioning my sexuality, nervous about their response. She didn't want them to be angry with her. She didn't want them to to be embarrassed of her and think less of her. And that, as she's crying, I'm like, ugh, okay. This is a more nuanced situation than we sometimes give at, credit to. It's at least more than what she gave us last year. Definitely. At and least she's talking about is, it. That's why she got so annoying last year was because she would do all of these things. And there were so many things surrounding it. Having Morgan Wade on the show. We know about the music video. We know about what's going on with Mo. And you're just not talking about it at all. Right. So to your point, yes. As soon as she says, oh, we're not saying her name. It's like, why are we, we're Here doing we this again. worse than we yeah. did last year. Here we now. go again. Now we're not even saying her name. Yeah, we're not even saying her name. We're taking a step back even more. And it made no sense. But her opening up like this is way more than she did all of last year. Yeah. And it's way more real and it's way more involved in maybe a storyline for her. Maybe something that she can talk about and can reach people with. Yeah. That's something that you might be able to do through all of this. I don't have any faith that she's going to be able to maintain that all season because I think she's going to be dealing with Dorit the entire time and dealing with other people talking about her life. But yeah, I, I'll give you that 2%. And what what's interesting about that is the moment that you get real with it, and I think that how Garcelle approaches it is correct as well. She's like, look, we support you with whatever. And I think that this whole thing is more nuanced than we give credit to because of yep. how irritating it got last year. Like, yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, Kyle, you don't owe us what yeah. your sexuality is. That's your business. It's not It's not for us to be like, you need to come out on TV. That's right. inappropriate. It's your life. I get that. That's fair. But what happened in this scene, by you being open and honest, as you allowed for us, the audience, to connect for a minute and be like, oof, you know what? There's more to this. And you're right. right. And telling your daughters must have been terrifying. And good for you for doing that. And right. it must have felt amazing for Portia to hug you and say, Mom, we love you no matter what. What you just did was all that you need to do. Just be honest with us. And there'd be so much less backlash because in this scene, I felt bad for her. I also was proud of her for being able to go through this and be open about it. And it took 30 seconds. Yeah. It took 30 seconds of being genuine and authentic for you to connect with the audience again 
which you used to be able to do more. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that you need to go through your whole journey on TV. And maybe that's kind of what I got from this. And I'm hoping that this rings true because the focus is Dorit versus Kyle. I'm hoping what this was, was let's address this now. I'm not even going to say her name. This is what I'm going through. I'm trying to figure it out. I told my daughters, let's leave it here. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. So yeah. we'll see what comes from it. But Dorit joins and, ooh my God, the intro. Hello, Kyle. I was like, ooh, awkward yeah. as fuck. What was that? He's into it. <laughs> like, be cool, man. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? And we saw you coming from a mile away because you just tipped over the martini tray with your hat. Yep. Like, settle down. Yep. Uh, we get it. You're awkward because then you sit down and you could have heard a pin drop over in Los Feliz. Yep. I don't know where that is in regards to this. No, neither do I. I was trying but... to sound cool like a new Californian, yeah, like we LA. Cut this, yeah. Maybe should we cut this? Yeah, we should Let's cut, cut this. Cut this. Out, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to cut this, but no. Anyway, Kathy is good for one thing because I'm not, I don't really need Kathy on these on this show anymore. No. But what she is good for is a moment like this where she's hot. So she takes out her hair extensions. I've never had a hair extension. Nope. I don't know if they're warm. I imagine they would be. Because think about when you grow your hair out, it gets a little hot out. This is the longest my hair's been hurt, in forever. Hair, oh, yeah. You, if you get a buzz cut versus having it longer It feels hair. lighter. Yeah, for okay. sure. All right. But I think it's hysterical. She takes it out and just throws it on the chair. There's, there's hair. Now we have hair on the chair, yep. which you could argue is surrealism. That is surrealism. Yeah, hair wow. and chair. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Good for Good you, job, Kathy. Kathy. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't, she does not know what surrealism is. No. But she, in a moment, actually created some art on that chair. But anyway, we get a performance from Yellow Cat. I, I kind of had Kyle's sentiment where I was surprised that this is at a Sutton party. I was, and I knew immediately that Erica was going to love it. Oh, yeah. It's immediately, a very as soon as I saw the outfits, and then they started singing, and they started, I don't know, the lyrics. I, but... Yeah, as soon as it started, Erica's going to love this. I was afraid she was going to join. Mm -hmm. I was like, she's going to get on stage right now, and her outfit's close enough where she could dance I with them. I think she's past that part of her I life. I hope so. Yeah. Unless she's drunk at a Christmas party and singing along with Asher. We need Asher back. Right? Christmas. Did you ever think you would say that? Yes. Oh, you've been, yeah. okay, you've been holding on to that. I think when he did it, I said we needed this every year. We do need that every year. Yeah. If we just could, for on Christmas. Or at least on Watch What Happens Live. Bring him yeah, back. From just, him back. Just have him sing once and have Bravo Erica Con. drunk in the stands and she can sing along with him. Perfect. That's great. It's, it's a wholesome scene. That's all we need. Yeah, all right, I'm, I'm down for that. I, I'll fuck with that. But Yellow Cat sings Superpower Pussy. Cool. Erica, Jane, and Sutton are friends now. Erica says, you know, I want to that... kill her sometimes. But yeah, like they, she throws a good party. So I'm glad that they're vibing. And it all wraps up with Kyle and Dorit, and they decide to have a little conversation off to the side. Before we even talk about it, I will say once again, after watching the scene, Team Dorit all the way. Mm -hmm. She sits down. They're going back and forth a little bit. And, you know, Kyle, very half-assed, goes, I know, I'm sorry about PK. And look, there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of feelings. We both have our own sides. And... She brings up the Amazon Live thing and questioning their entire friendship. And Dorit's like, she's had enough. Yep. Understandably so. Because I don't think Kyle's giving enough attention to what you've said. You're trying to sit down and have a heart to heart with your friend. You've said multiple times that you're not real friends. Yep. And this is somebody, Dorit definitely, th whether Kyle believed they were real friends or not along the way, I don't know. I do think she did. I think she's using this as a cop out. Yeah. Dorit definitely thought you were friends. This whole conversation made no sense to me. It made this, zero this sense. This was the butt of what Kyle had been doing for the last year. Yes. You can see where Dorit is. And that's why I say that Dorit has been very consistent in saying, I'm really confused because I thought we were close. Our kids are close. You texted PK. Like, there's so much going on here. And you've never been a good friend to me. Well, you have been in the past, but you haven't been recently. And now you're claiming that we're not friends. Yes. And Kyle was genuinely perplexed. Saying we, I thought we were closer than that. I didn't think that you would do that. And we bring up the, uh, the Kathy Hilton or like rate rate the Richard sisters thing. It is insane to me that 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 Kyle's able to go back and forth on this. I just don't understand she where she's no trying to. Weight. There's no weight at all. All you have to do is say, you know what? I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. I hope that everything's okay, and I hope you can lean on me. Dorit is rightfully so frustrated with Kyle and wants to sit there and talk to her. Does she? Trip over her words is she's super messy. Trips over the hat, of course. That's Dorit. Of course, that's Dorit. But I've never questioned Dorit's feelings towards Kyle as a friend, ever. Mm -mm. I've questioned your feelings towards Dorit through your actions, but also because you're telling us that you guys aren't friends. Correct. So I, I, you lose this. You immediately lose this. So just... 
pick a side, either try to make up with her and say that you guys are friends and everything's going to be okay. Or if you're not close and you're not friends, then say that to her. But That's she, all you have to do. She did what she did to Sutton last year. Yep. And what she's done multiple times to multiple people, Dorit's a little fired up. She's not yelling at you. And she's certainly not being aggressive. She's had it. And she's voicing her opinion yep. because she feels hurt. She's like, well, I'm not going to do this. You're going to be so aggressive. She plays the victim and she's gaslighting the shit mm -hmm. out of Dorit, which in turn is going to ramp her up. And now she is going to cause a scene because you won't hear her out. She's telling you what's up. You want to know? Here's how she feels. And in the beginning, was it a little abrasive? Yeah. Was it aggressive? Certainly not. No. Now it's going to get aggressive because you're doing that thing that you do where you're like, well, I'm not going to do this if you're going to do that. Correct. This is first and foremost, this is a housewife show. So shit's going to get amped up. Match the energy or fuck off. Second of all, we watched this behavior for too long from Kyle. Mm -hmm. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. You're gaslighting. And now she can't get across what, if you want to solve this, if you want to get to the other side of it, and Dev had a really good point, I think that what Kyle's trying to do with the Rank the Richard sisters and all that other stuff, she's looking for reasons to not be friends with Dorit. Yeah. She's trying to find a way out. And here, Dorit's trying to tell you exactly why. And we don't get this out of Dorit. That was raw. Yeah. I think what she was about to say would have been the most yeah, I think genuinely she's still very serious. upset about the whole thing. So she was about to tell your actual feelings, which we don't get a lot, mm -hmm. and you gaslight her, piss her off, and play the whole "I'm not doing this if you're gonna do this." Yep. Then, then don't do it. Period. Yeah. Don't have don't have the conversation with her. Yeah. It's just irritating, and when I walk away from that scene, I'm going, Dorit's 100 in the right here because you've actually said mean shit. Dorit really hasn't said that much mean shit. She sided with your sister, which is. The kiss of death because of whatever underlying issues you have amidst your family. Right. Fine. Tell her that. Say, hey, you want to know what it is? You want to know what my problem is, Kathy? Your relationship with Kathy, I think it's fucked up. All right, cool. Yeah. Let's get into it now. There's reasons, yeah. Yeah, but don't skirt around it and then play like a scared puppy dog like you're being mean. You started this shit because you keep going on different platforms saying that you've never been friends. That's really fucking mean, especially considering this person's now alone has little kids mm -hmm. looking for friends, thought she had a close friend in you, and you are going around saying you're not friends because you're going through your own weird journey. That's mean. So she's mad, and you can't even withstand the heat no. when she's pressing you a little bit, and you're playing the, meh, get well, away. Look, if this is what Kyle's going to do all season, she's going to get absolutely crushed. Roasted. She is going to get destroyed because there are other sharks in the water. There's other people that are going to go after you for all of your inconsistencies, the way that you've treated others. It's going to all come to a head if this is the defense that you're going to take. It doesn't you work. You need to figure out where you stand and go with that. But look, I think it's I think it's got a lot of hope this season. I do too. I'm very hopeful for the season. I enjoy watching it. It was a good first episode. I'm happy we got right into everything. There's going to be fallout and there's going to be re-escalation. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I, th I think. I, I, I agree. I think we're looking at a good season Here's my reasons why, because we don't have questions, because you guys haven't seen it yet. No big deal. We got the screener. It's not a big deal. Relax, everybody. But you haven't seen it yet, so no questions. But what I do think we're going to see after watching this, I think we're going to see an unhinged Dorit eventually. Yep. I think it's going to be very entertaining. I think it'll be extraordinarily messy because she trips over her words. Ryan Bailey said something similar last night. She's not the most composed when she gets ramped up. So I think that it's going to be sloppy, but I think it's going to be really entertaining. Yeah. I think we're going to see Erica trying to play mediator a little bit, but I think eventually someone's going to say something to piss her off and push her over the edge. I think we might see a Sutton. And again, Ryan alluded to this, that maybe gets fed up and might be a little bit solo this season. In the water. Yeah. I think she's gotten to the point now where she, uh, she's a standalone can handle her own business, and we might see a maybe a villain arc. I don't know. We'll see. I, mean, I don't know. I do think that we may have her on soon, and we can ask her. Hint, hint. But that's kind of my prediction. I think the main thing will obviously be Kyle and Dorit, but yeah. I think it's going to be way more entertaining than I am prepared for, which yeah. is my big hope. And then I think Bose is, is going to round this cast out with somebody that we've needed to bring into the cast to show that we can bring new housewives into Beverly Hills and be successful. Last year, everyone we tried yeah. to bring in. No flops. No flops. We brought in Anne-Marie, who was awful, and then Denise Richards, what the fuck was that? Agreed. That was bizarre. So 
I agree. I'm looking forward to it. I'm cautiously optimistic, as we like to be here. Yep. That we'll have a better year than last year and uh, lots to look forward to. Oh, yeah. But we don't have any questions, so uh, Brav Bros are out of here. See you next week. See you later. Later. Bye.